Hello and welcome back to the MCAT grind. We have Biochem Chapter 12, the last of Biochem. I'm excited. And this is a summary of energetics of metabolism. So taking in everything we know about the biochem metabolism process and combining it together with a process that we know in chemistry and physics already regarding Gibbs free energy. Now Gibbs free energy uh, states that uh, equilibrium can be changed if the product and the reactants are in different ratios again. There's a common joke saying that chemistry loves equilibrium while biology doesn't like equilibrium because if you have equilibrium, you're dead. All right. All, all about our human processes is trying to drive towards non-equilibrium to generate energy. Okay, And generate processes and the way we do that is coupling reactions such as the the breakdown of ATP into ADP, generating a certain amount of energy, and using that to couple another reaction, such as a coupling of a breakdown or a coupling of a synthesis to generate some net, net spontaneous process. By coupling them together, right? think about, okay, if I need to uh, cook some food, and but that requires energy, right? But that energy input and the energy output, the output outweighs the input, so my net gain is a spontaneous process. I will go cook my meal, because it spontaneously gives me energy at the end, right? And the spontaneous is not just energy, this is actually gives free energy, so it tells you whether the reaction is spontaneous going forward or going reverse. And what was it going on about? Yeah, flavoprotein is vitamin B, and it's a vital, vital part in the oxid the electron transport chain right it can act as an electron carrier and act as coenzymes for the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex Flav uh, flavoprotein deficiency could lead to death pretty much you might see flavoprotein in abbreviation fmn commonly okay next we have insulin versus glucagon their processes you may have already learned them but insulin are situated in beta islet cells of Langerhans in the pancreas and we also have the glucagon which counteracts the action of insulin so in the other the other way so insulin tries to take in blood glucose into the cells and glucagon wants to increase the blood glucose level insulin is activated when you just finish the meal and it's really active one to lower the blood sugar right and to do that it can inhibit uh, glycolysis and instead go for gluconeogenesis. Um, uh, no, not gluconeogenesis, but uh, glyco glycogenesis to generate glycogen, right? To store them into the liver. Whereas glucagon undergoes, uh, stimulates glycolysis and gluconeogenesis to create new glucose molecules to flow in the bloodstream and deliver. Okay? So glucagon is in prolonged fasting and post-absorptive state. And insulin is just in right after eating. Okay. Next we have cortisol, which acts similarly to glucagon, increases the blood glucose as well as increasing the catecholamine levels. So catecholamines are your uh, basically steroid hormones. So they will basically increase your blood glucose, your excitement level, and they help increase the sugar you need to act active and function. While the catecholamines are termed epinephrine and norepinephrine, and they are uh, they're done or they're produced in the adrenal medulla. All right. Your adrenal cortex produces the the cortisone and the hormones, the steroid hormones, but your catecholamines are produced in your adrenal medulla. So epinephrine and norepinephrine, they increase your the blood glucose and also your sweat level. And think about sympathetic response, right? Everything in there in the psychology department. And it increases the rate of lipolysis. lipolysis and metabolic uh, rate. 
Your thyroid hormone also increases your metabolic rate, and you have your T4 and T3. T4, it takes a long time to act, but it holds a longer time to act, but it holds for longer. T3, your thyroid 3, uh, which has three iodine molecules attached to it, is fast acting and it's only temporary. So we have now this little table that shows the different organs that using the different energy sources. Your liver uses glucose and amino acid in your welfare state, but in a fasting state, they convert to using the fatty acids. Right? Remember the fatty acid metabolism. The liver takes uh, uses IDL, your intermediate level uh, lipoprotein, to bring intermediate density lipoprotein to bring from the peripheral uh, glucose, the blood glucose into the liver and use those fa um, fatty acid to break down, break down fatty acid into acetyl-CoA as well as NADH and generate them for energy. Your skeletal muscles use glucose mostly, but can also use fatty acids and lactone when in the fasting state. Your cardiac muscle uses fatty acid either in a well-fed state or a fasting state and also uses lactone. Oh, no, ketone, sorry. So ketone and ketone. Adipose tissue, so your fat tissues, uses glucose mostly in a well-fed state, but they can convert to using fatty acid. Your brain uses glucose, but could convert to using glucose and ketone. So up to two-thirds of your brain uses ketone at a, a super long fasting state. Your red blood cells constantly can only use glucose because they lack a mitochondria and they cannot perform fatty acid. Uh, so, yeah, the lipid, the beta oxidation requires your mitochondria and a carnitine shuttle mechanism to bring the fatty acid in. So, finally, we have these molecules that signal hunger. Ghrelin signals for hungry, hunger, and it's generated from the G cells near the stomach. Orexin, orexin is for also hungry and it's produced because one is hungry and they need to eat food. Leptin is produce a level of satiety so you've already eaten enough to stop eating and chewing and suppresses orexin. So it's like a counteraction. So aside from ghrelin being released in the stomach, orexin and leptin are in the hypothalamus. The lateral hypothalamus and the, the ventral, medial ventral hypothalamus. The lateral hypothalamus, LH, if you remove it, you will lack hunger. So it is for hungry state. So LH, lateral hypothalamus for hungry, and your uh, ventral medial hypothalamus, your VH, if you remove that you will become very hungry so it is meant to eat okay so that's pretty much it take care